I wanted to read from the Charlie Savage piece this morning about what happened with Chelsea Manning. Uh, I think it's really interesting to see how they've covered this. Uh, the New York Times writes that during her court martial in 2013, Ms. Manning had admitted sending WikiLeaks large archives of secret documents. Her bulk disclosure vaulted the group and Mr. Assange to global fame year before we gained a different notoriety for publishing stolen Democratic emails that Russian hackers had stolen during the 2016 presidential campaign. This is another example of where they could easily have put in that Russian hackers allegedly had stolen during the 2016 campaign. The word allegedly is gone. So the New York Times has convicted the Russians in, in the pages of their newspaper, not in a courtroom. And then it goes on to say in a lengthy confession in 2013, Ms. Manning said that she had interacted online with someone who was likely Mr. Assange. Uh, does anybody know anything about that? Is there yeah, any evidence that she's I was, reading about that. I was reading about that earlier today, and I don't remember which article it was exactly, but it seemed to be that there was an, an account that was used, but it was labeled, you know, basic, basically WikiLeaks, and that it was never identified specifically as Julian Assange. The assumption is that at some point, possibly, it was Julian Assange directly communicating, but that was never really established in her original uh, court martial proceeding from what I read. Yeah. Okay. It goes on to say, but she, Manning, said that she acted of her own accord and was not directed by anyone at WikiLeaks. That's what she said at her in her lengthy confession in 2013. Ms. Manning said prosecutors had wanted her to go over those same events. That's in the grand jury. Quote from a statement from Manning. The grand jury's questions pertain to disclosures from nine years ago and took place six years after an in-depth computer forensic case in which I testified for almost a full day about these events. I stand by my previous testimony. I will not participate in a secret process that I morally object to, particularly one that has been historically used to entrap and persecute activists for protected political speech. That's exactly what Brian was talking about that this is grand jury has been used historically to entrap and persecute activists for a protected political speech. So it's clear that they want her to go over the same material and say something she didn't say the first time in a in a in an un, in a, a venue in which the Sixth Amendment rights uh, are not applied. And I think that's the essence of what she's doing here. And she could stay in jail for a very long time, as we've heard in order to prevent uh, her from being manipulated or tricked into saying something. Well, the, the first thing that I, that I thought when I heard this news, well, I thought two things. Number one, this was an incredibly courageous thing that she did. You can like Chelsea or dislike her or like her politics or not, but you would have to agree that this was incredibly courageous. She could have done two other things. She could have ratted out whoever it was they wanted her to rat out, probably Julian. She didn't do that. She also could have just gone in there and, and she could have taken the fifth. And she didn't do that. She did what Pete Seeger did in the late 1950s when he was hauled before the, the House Un-American Activities Committee. And he took the first rather than the fifth. She took the first, the fourth, and the sixth, I think. Um, right. That was a courageous thing in the 1950s, and he ended up being sentenced, convicted, and sentenced to two years in prison. He never actually served those two years because the conviction was overturned on appeal. But this is not a decision that one takes lightly. Remember that Chelsea has already been in prison for seven years. Two of those years were in solitary confinement. I know the PTSD that she must be suffering from. I know how much in her gut she probably hated the idea of being locked up in a cage again, but she did it on principle. And that to me is a toughness that is rarely seen. I have great admiration for her today. No doubt about that. Do you have a sense of how uh, the appeal would go? Uh, how likely uh, is she likely to prevail on those first, fourth and sixth amendment grounds? Is it likely to be successful? I, I spoke to a couple of different attorneys today, including one who's a constitutional scholar, and they seem to be in agreement that the law uh, is clear um, and the case law is clear that she'll, she'll likely lose on appeal. Uh, 
But I don't think she cares. I don't think she expected to win either at the district level or even on appeal uh, at the circuit level. I think she did it to prove a point. And it is a point that very few Americans would have the guts to, to take by the horns like she did. I, I was shocked by it. I just assumed she would go in there and take the fifth when pushed to, to make a decision. And she didn't. Uh, John, given your background, can you give us some insight into why she cited the fourth amendment, of course, which is against illegal search and seizure? How does that apply here? You know, my guess is, Joe, that because she essentially answered all of the questions that she thought the uh, prosecution would ask the grand or ask her in front of the grand jury anyway in her own trial in 2012 and 13. Really, all the prosecutors needed to do was to submit the transcript of that hearing into the record. And then the same information's in there. It's as good as, as it is if she sits in front of them and, and just repeats it all. Um, so I think that she's arguing that because the information is already in the public record as part of that trial, it is illegal for them to force her to go back through the whole thing all over again. Based it's on the Fourth Amendment. No, I, I think it's a pissing match is what it is. So based on the Fourth Amendment, would it be illegal for them to go over the previously uh, I don't know. testimony? I, I'm, I'm not an attorney. Um, that's that's. It's all I could come up with today yeah. as I was as I was pouring over this. But I think her argument is: Look, this is harassment. The information's already out there. I've already answered these questions. I'm not going to play games with you. So let's speculate. Why would they want to go over that same material again if they didn't want her to say something different, right? You know, I I think it's because. And I know prosecutors, man, I'll tell you from firsthand experience, I know these guys, they're monsters. I think probably a lot of them are still furious that her 35 <laughs> years were commuted to seven. Um, I think that they saw an opportunity to get her in trouble again, at the very least, by having her contradict herself. And then even though she has immunity, at least they can try to discredit her by saying, hey, she said A in, in 2015, or 2013, she said B in 2019, uh, she's not reliable. Uh, and then she, she called them on it. How could they do that if it's a secret grand jury? How could they call her out and say she's something different in the grand jury? Well, because eventually that, that grand jury information is going to be given in discovery to both the, to the, uh, to the defense. And even though the, the grand jury um, itself is a secret body, the information always comes out. Certainly mine did. I know exactly what people said about me in the grand jury. I saw the transcripts. Yeah. So they were going to try to trip her up or manipulate her into saying something that could incriminate Assange. That's what I think it seems that's like. exactly it. That is exactly it. Yes. And, and like a, I say, you called them on it. In a setting where she doesn't have any counsel, where she's not exactly. allowed to have defense to help her through this. Mm -hmm. You are on your own in the grand jury. And, and like I say, if you contradict yourself, then who knows what can end up happening to you. They offered her immunity. If she hadn't had immunity, they could charge her with making a false statement or with perjury or even with immunity. As I said a second ago, they could at least argue that she was inconsistent and try to discredit her and she wouldn't allow them to do that. This also tells us two things, this whole story. One, that they're dead serious about getting Assange. And two, that this indictment is not over. They, it may be sealed, but they're still adding to it. So that could be one way encouraging that they don't maybe feel they have enough yet. Yes. To get them so that they needed her. Uh, so she, by not testifying now, she's preventing them from furthering this indictment, which is a yeah. great thing she's doing, right? I think, I think that's exactly right, Joe. And I'll tell you why. I was arrested four months before I was indicted. They arrested me because they wanted to make a political point in the press. They didn't have enough to hold me. So I was only locked up for two hours. And then they started their investigation. So I was arrested in January. They didn't even impanel a grand jury until April. And then finally in April, they lodged these formal charges. So I think the same thing is happening here. I think they've been doing this investigation forever. And they realize now that push has come to shove, they really don't have very much information against Julian. 
And so they're going to try by impaneling this grand jury to dig up something that they can hang on him or something extra that they can hang on him that they can then bargain away later. All they've got is the Espionage Act, which uh, they could use to say that uh, Assange illegally possessed classified information, that he yeah. was not an authorized person to have it. But they don't want to go down that road because that opens up the New York Times problem, which is That's that right. the Times. Uh, so they want to get something else. It looks like from what we're seeing today, they don't have that something else. And they were hoping, they to get, hoping to get it from Chelsea Manning. And mm -hmm. she's given a big middle finger. I agree 100%. I think that's exactly what we saw today. I, I think the point Brian was making earlier about the, the, the bravery of Chelsea Manning here, it's, it's a vital point that can't be overstated or said too much, especially since she no longer has the voice to speak for herself. Since she doesn't have a voice right now, it is very important simply to point out that, look, the as I said before, the easy, it would have been, how easy would it have been for Chelsea Manning to simply go into this grand jury, right? And kind of just plead the fifth on some stuff or whatever. The non-cooperation here, Brian hit on this earlier, the non-cooperation is a big deal. And there needs to be more of it. There needs to be more people saying, look, this, this is a farce. I'm not going to be involved in a farce. I'm not going to be involved in a, you, you don't need to stay, uh, Hunter Thompson said something, I always get the quote wrong, but you don't need to stay on an uneven playing field. There's no, you can, it is completely sporting to when you realize the game is rigged to say, I'm out. And at this point, all that is going on is whatever anyone thinks of Chelsea Manning for a hundred reasons, personal bias or political bias, whether you thought she was a hero uh, as Bradley Manning, whether you thought that, doesn't make any difference. Right now, today, in the atmosphere we're in, she should be a hero to anybody who cares about the First Amendment. And sadly, there are fewer and fewer people, particularly in the media, who care about the First Amendment. They just pay lip service to it. You know, com compare Chelsea Manning to Jim Acosta, let's say, where for CNN was freaking out because he lost his press pass. It's not even close. There's no, there's, there's no similarity between Jim Acosta losing his press pass at the White House for a couple of days and Chelsea Manning volu basically volunteering. I mean, she, she doesn't want to go, but she knew what she was in for. She absolutely, she walked in knowing she would likely not be walking out. And that is the most heroic thing I can think of. 